Thank you, Senator Kelly. I am very proud here to be here today with our caucus proposals on the issue of mental health. It is obviously a critical issue, and I want to provide some data points for you. In December 7, 2021, the U.S. Surgeon General issued an advisory that highlighted the urgent need to address the nation's youth mental health crisis. According to the report, depression and anxiety symptoms among our youth doubled during the COVID pandemic, with 25% of the youth expressing depressive symptoms and 20% experiencing anxiety symptoms. And in early 2021, the emergency departments throughout this country have reported suspected suicide attempts that are 51% higher for young adolescent women and 4% higher for adolescent boys compared to the same time period in early 2019. That is a disparate gender difference and it shows a remarkable need that is out there in the marketplace. And we've also have heard in local areas an overflow of our emergency rooms for adolescent mental health supportive services. It is at a crisis mode. And then we have to address the pandemic in exposing some of the fissures that we've seen and exacerbated it. The isolation and the lack of in-person communications and interactions, not only in our schools, but our interpersonal dynamics, the rarity of being able to gather and, and to be able to express ourselves has not only created social emotional dynamics, but it has also created a cover for some of the aspects of domestic violence, mental health aspects that just doesn't get discovered. So the pandemic has not just created an existing problem, it has exasperated and created a bigger gulf in regards to the need that we have. I think it's important to bring it back beyond statistics that we have heard heartbreaking stories of real life struggles on social emotional dynamics. Sometimes those stories are tragic and have significant consequences for the individual, but also those families that struggle with that. I think another aspect of it is the fact that I truly believe that mental health crisis right now has created a correlation with the need for substances and a potential increase in abuse incidences. We have found that there are needs for coping with mental health struggles with substance abuse. And that is a dangerous aspect, particularly when you think about the, the, the current curse of fentanyl. But I think ultimately we also need to look at a societal issue and what we're doing in this legislation and in this press conference is raising the awareness to remove the stigma of mental health, not only in our youth, but in our general society. And I think the idea of talk and legislating is critical. But I think with these set of proposals, we are in a position to act. So I am absolutely proud to be a part of this presentation but I also want to take the moment to acknowledge the people that know these issues better than anyone else. People that have lived through these stories and these traumas and these individual professionals that have been there on the front line providing supportive care and services. One such individual is Michael Patota, the CEO of Children's and Family Guidance Centers, which serves the southwestern region, and I'll let him explain the breadth and the critical need that they have as a service and what they have seen in the land state right now. So uh, I'll present to you Michael Patoda, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Child and Family Guidance Center. Thank you, Senator. Thank you.